Hello everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Night Waves Training Ground, uh, also known as the Camelot Training Room. Now, this guide is on the mini quest that you unlock after completing the King's Ransom quest. Uh, now, the general idea of this mini quest is that it's located on the top floor of Camelot Castle, and um, you need to speak to the uh, squire who is standing outside the door of the training room, who will explain how the training grounds work. So you must successfully defeat the eight knights at the round table, you're allowed to use any style of combat however summoning prayer binds and stuns are not allowed and will not work as well as doing damage each knight will drain certain combat stats such as attack defense strength magic and ranged uh, each knight is harder than the preceding one and will hit more accurately thereby draining combat starts uh, faster so as the king's ransom quest requires a defense level of 65 uh, you should be a fairly decent combat level to begin with before even having access to uh, this mini quest however um, as you can probably imagine the better combat you have uh, the easier you're going to find this however even if you're like max combat you're still going to need the assistance of uh, potions and other resources uh, to be able to defeat all the knights successfully now I will mention that if you die during the mini quest uh, it's fine you won't risk losing any items as it's a safe uh, mini quest you will just appear outside the training grounds once again but you will have to start from scratch you can't save your progress you need to defeat all the knights in one go so personally I would recommend whatever combat style you use is based on your highest uh type so for example if your melee uh, stats are the highest then obviously go with using the melee approach however if your magic or range is higher than that of uh, your attack and strength uh, then obviously go with that approach I don't think the knights have any particular weaknesses um, so you're not going to have any advantages there the other thing you're really going to need is potions and food so as for potions so if you're using uh, melee you're going to want uh, potions like super strength uh, attack and defense again if you're using magic or range then obviously a super magic or super range potion the other potions that you're really going to need are super restores as these will boost your drain stats uh, as they will deplete quite quickly during this mini quest so you're going to need a few of them if possible bring flasks as they have six doses each uh, for one inventory space so then you don't have to worry uh, the risk of running out uh, and obviously regarding food you want to bring the best food based on your constitution level uh, so there's no point bringing really high level food if you don't have the constitution to consume it properly um, so for example uh, if you're a certain level which enables um, monkfish to be eaten um, better than obviously bring monkfish rather than sharks uh, as overall it's going to cost you more and not be as effective so other than that I can't really talk you through the setup any more than that uh, and again there's no real tactic to defeating the knights but what I will do is tell you about each one um, during the footage and then you'll have an idea of what sort of uh, stat they'll lower and obviously uh, what a level they're looking at so as said you need to do this by going to the very top of the uh, Camelot Castle and uh, you can do that by using one of the towers either in the uh, south east or southwest corner of the castle I can't remember the exact one but you need to go for a series of rooms to reach it once you're at the very top of the castle, go speak to the squire around the Knight's Waves and then when you're ready uh, you'll be able to enter the door and the battle will commence straight away so the very first knight you'll fight is Sir Bedivere, who is level 79 and the stats that he lowers are strength, magic and ranged. So use your potions to boost your stats uh, and then obviously begin fighting uh, straight away. Obviously the higher damage abilities that you can use the better so just try and focus on them. Obviously also be aware of your stats being lowered um, especially if you are using um, a particular one like magical range as uh, if your magic level starts depleting you'll be able to use less spells and abilities and the same that applies for melee and range. So just keep topping it up every now and again and don't let it drop too low. Once you defeat Bedivere, the next one is Sir Pelias, who uh, is level 79, and he will mainly uh, lower defense. You've only got to worry about that one uh, stat there. However, um, obviously, as he's lowering your defense, you will start taking more and more damage the lower it gets. So again, just be mindful of that. The next knight is Sir Tristram, uh, who is level 79, and he will drain strength, magic, and ranged. Again, no real different tactic there, just obviously keep uh, yourself potted up and uh, keep trying to hit as much abilities as possible. The next knight is Sir Palamedes, and now this is when um, it starts getting a little bit harder. His combat level is 84 and he will drain attack, magic and range at a lot more accurate rate than the preceding ones. Um, so again, your accuracy will start depleting quite quickly if you're not careful of that, so just bear that in mind. 
Once you defeat Palamede, Sir Lucan will appear, who is 84 once again, and will drain defense, magic, and range. So again, just be mindful of your defense being drained mostly. Uh, and obviously, if you're using melee, you haven't got to worry too much about uh, not being able to hit him. If you're using magic and range, he may start lowering your uh, requirements to use certain equipment and abilities. The next one is Sir Gawain, uh, who is 84 and uh, drains attack, magic and range, so very similar to Palamede, uh, but however a much stronger and accurate version, but the same uh, tactic for him. Once you defeat him, Sir Kay will appear, who is level 84 and drains only defense, but again he does drain this at quite a quick rate, and so you're going to have to be quite careful of that so your defense doesn't plummet, uh, otherwise as soon as that starts happening you will begin taking more damage and uh, obviously the armor you're wearing won't use its full effect. However, as it's the only one stat to worry about, you can really just go uh, quick against him, give him everything you've got with your best attacks, and obviously boost with your um, attack, strength, uh, defense, magic, and range potions, whatever you're using. And then uh, the final knight will appear, who is Sir Lancelot, who uh, is level 84 and will drain uh, all of the stats, so attack, defense, strength, magic and range. So this will be the toughest one out of the lot, um, so I recommend obviously using your super restores to get all your stats back to uh, their normal levels and then use your relevant potions to boost them above what they normally are. This way you at least have got a good couple of minutes to just try and focus purely on attacking him before having to worry about using more super restores and that, um, but obviously just be mindful that they will all start dropping so if they drop too low you'll end up not being able to use certain attacks and you'll be taking lots of damage um, but the same tactic really applies there However, once you successfully defeat Sir Lancelot, you'll exit the room and it will come up that you've completed um, the Knight's Waves training ground. You will receive access to the Chivalry, Piety, Augury and Rigor prayers. You will also receive 20,000 experience in Constitution, Strength, Attack, Magic, Range and Defense skills. And obviously you have the ability now to change your spawn point to Camelot as an alternative to Falador, Lumbridge and Soul Wars. So there we go, that's the mini quest completed. So it's not really difficult as long as you sort of prep yourself with your resources and relevant weapons and armor, and obviously you have a tactic in mind. Uh, and the rewards from this are really good. Those prayers are very helpful, at least until you're able to unlock uh, ancient curse prayers. Um, but obviously you will need a respective prayer level to use these different prayers, but they are very handy. So if you do boss in uh, quite a fair bit, this will then uh, help enable you to get more boss kills and more efficient boss kills. So it's a very good reward. And Obviously the experience will bump you up quite a few levels again. But yeah, other than that, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you get stuck at all or need any suggestions, uh, then obviously leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye.